Here's all the evidence I've gathered for this video. So hopefully it's enough. Hey guys, what's up? I'm CJ and welcome back to my galaxy. Today we're discussing the fate of Lucy Gray. Before I get into this, I want to, everyone to know that yes, the ending of Song Birds and Snakes is ambiguous. However, I want to put out a solid theory of why, of what possibly happened to Lucy Gray. What is the most likely scenario? What did Suzanne Collins intend for us to understand from Lucy Gray's fate and the poem of Lucy Gray by William Wordsworth. We may not find out exactly what happened to Lucy Gray, but we will find out what Suzanne Collins thinks happened to Lucy Gray, and that's pretty much as close as we can get to the real thing. You know, if the author says so, then why not? I wanted to start off this video by saying some widely believed theories of what happened to Lucy Gray and we're going to have a look at exactly why they could be or could not be true. One theory I find to be quite funny that went around the internet during the time Songbirds and Snakes came out was that Lucy Gray was out at not near snow, not anywhere near snow and just heard bullets in the background. That one I found to be quite funny. So snow didn't actually kill Lucy Gray and she ran off and lived her life out in the woods in the wilderness for the rest of her days. One a lot of people believe is that she was actually killed by snow, which is an unfortunate ending, but is one that is rather likely. Another is snow did shoot Lucy Gray. However, she survived and succumbed to her wounds later on after snow left. Those first theories are the ones that we're gonna discuss in today's video to do with William Wordsworth's poem, Lucy Gray. Those are the ones I think are probably the most plausible. However, there are other theories that I wanted to quickly debunk in this video because they could, they could in theory, they, they add to the ambu ambiguous ending that Susan Collins intended. However, there is some evidence fighting against it. Lucy Gray either became coin, greasy say, or returned to District 12, but remained living there in secret. I've seen many creators talk about Lucy Gray becoming coin, and the reason her not becoming coin is because it is completely against Lucy Gray's uh, character development in general. Lucy Gray wanted freedom to be herself. She never would have sold her soul to the devil of District 13 like that, or move to District 13 and raise a daughter to be like Coin. No way. Another one I've seen is Lucy Gray becoming Greasy Say. I highly doubt that she wouldn't have changed her name because people would have recognized her face from The Hob whether or not she changed her name. I've had many commenters talk about how possibly Lucy Gray could have become uh, Katniss's grandmother. Whilst I personally believe it was Maud Ivory who became Katniss's grandmother. One particular commenter, Kai makes content, should be somewhere here, wherever it fits. The comments, I honestly think that she is Katniss's grandmother. The song Hanging Tree, Lucy Gray made and she didn't sing it to anybody but Snow and maybe a few of her family members. Also in the books it says that Katniss is picking Katniss's Katniss like the plant just like her grandmother used to. I'm going to get into a section in the poem in a minute of William Wordsworth's poem Lucy Gray and how there is a possibility I think she might have been living in District 12 or in the meadow area in secret. Whilst I'm open to the idea that Katniss's grandmother is from the covey somewhere whether or not it's Lucy Gray, it's Maud Ivory, it's She's related to Tam Amber, who knows? The way Katniss would have learnt the song is through Maud Ivory because there is a quote in the book specifically talking about how Maud Ivory would easily memorize every song Lucy Gray ever created and that she would ease, that she was just a couple of years of taking over as lead singer from Lucy Gray anyway. The Just Like Her Grandmother Used To is a quote that I couldn't find in the book. So if Kai makes content as in looking at this video, Give me a page number because I'd love to have a look and see if, or even in the movies, if it, the, that quote is there and if there's anything around that would, that would give us context clues to see if, you know, Katniss is related to Lucy Gray, Maud Ivory, anyone in the covey at all. Whilst I think Lucy Gray being Katniss's grandmother is probably not true, I think the whole idea and the way that the, the people are going in the right direction, especially in the analysis of the poem I've done and we're going to get into now. It's the right general direction. I think you guys are picking up on the right context, but we're going to get into more in depth of 
what is most likely. And you guys theorizing is great. I absolutely love hearing people's theories because the ending is supposed to be ambiguous. You're supposed to come up with your own theories as wild and wacky as they are. I'm sure Suzanne Collins is seeing all of you guys' theories and is absolutely loving it because that was her true intention. Knowing that the book would likely get a lot of attention since the original trilogy was so big in the first place. So, William Wordsworth's poem, Lucy Gray. Supposedly, as I've done research for this video, William Wordsworth had multiple poems called, based on Lucy or called Lucy, some sort of Lucy in his poem. The specific Lucy Gray poem is believed to be based on a real Lucy Gray girl or a real Lucy girl who went missing in a snowstorm and her body was found days later. It is widely believed by the people who studied his poems and this particular Lucy Gray poem that he has allowed in this poem for the little girl to live. That despite the true events, William Wordsworth decided she did not die, her legacy did, will not die because I will immortalize her in words. Which I think rings true for the themes and the character of Lucy Gray in The Hunger Games. In William Wordsworth's poem, Lucy Gray survives the snow despite Lucy Gray seemingly not surviving snow in the Hunger Games novel. Okay, on to my handwritten notes now. Now I am going to be reading directly from Songbirds and Snakes, the poem, which is more of a cleaned up version of the Lucy Gray poem by William Wordsworth. First of all, Suzanne Collins cleaned up this because, I, at least I assume, because the F slur is in this poem by William Wordsworth because um, it, it meant something different back then and Suzanne Collins simply went, well, let's just, it means something different now, so let's just clean it up a little bit. But in changing some of the lines in the Lucy Gray poem, she also switched the meaning ever so slightly, which I think is an important point that I want to make after reading the poem. Oft I had heard of Lucy Gray, and when I crossed the wild, I chanced to see at break of day the solitary child. No mate, no comrade Lucy knew. She dwelt where none abide, the sweetest thing that ever grew upon the mountain side. You yet may spy the fawn at play, the hare among the green, but the sweet face of Lucy Gray will never be more seen. Tonight will be a stormy night, you to the town must go, and take a lantern child to light your mother through the snow. That father will I gladly do, Tis scarcely afternoon. The village clock has just struck two, and yonder is the moon. At this the father turned his hook, to kindling for the day. He plied his work, and Lucy took the lantern on her way. As carefree as a mountain doe, a fresh new path she broke. Her feet dispersed the powdery snow that rose up just like smoke. The storm came on before its time, she wandered up and down. And many a hill did Lucy climb, but never reached the town. The wretched parents all that night went shouting far and wide, but there was neither sound nor sight to serve them as a guide. At daybreak on a hill they stood, they overlooked the scene, and thence they saw the bridge of wood that spanned a deep ravine. They wept and, turning homeward, cried, in heaven we shall meet, when in the snow the mother spied the print of Lucy's feet. Then downwards from the steep hill's edge, they tracked the footmarks small, and through the broken hawthorn hedge, and by the long stone wall. And then an open field they crossed, the marks were still the same. They tracked them on, not ever lost, and to the bridge they came. They followed from the snowy bank, those footmarks one by one, into the middle of the plank, and further there were none. Yet some maintain that to this day she is a living child, that you may see sweet Lucy Gray upon the lonesome wild. O'er oh, rough and smooth she trips along, and never looks behind, and sings a solitary song that whistles in the wind. <coughs> okay, so some of the, the uh, lines in the stanzas are changed, such as in the original, she dwelt on a wide moor is she dwelt on a mountainside instead. This is wording that I believe was changed by Suzanne Collins for a reason. In the sense that Suzanne Collins was trying to build a dystopia that this poem is orally passed down generation to generation that eventually the wording got mixed up as, as it was passed down. Specifically, I wouldn't be surprised if Lucy Gray's mother changed it to fit Lucy Gray as a person more. They, they live 
near Mountainside, District 12 is placed in, I might pronounce it wrong, the Appalachian Mountains. So she lived, she dwelt on a mountainside. So it's even more of Susan Collins' amazing world building about Lucy Gray and character development that, that this is a dystopian future where this poem has been orally passed down and not been able to be printed out like I have done for this video. So here's the question. What does this poem tell us of Lucy Gray's fate and her true fate, the most likely fate? I'm going to break it up a little bit. I'm not going to talk about every stanza. There are 16 stanzas. I, c I can't talk about all of them, but if you would like to literally go to your book, look it up online, you can find the original poem online. I got this literally copied and pasted it from a website. In my copy, if you guys want to look at this poem and want to break it down line by line, I it starts on 424 of this copy of The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. It was one of the original first covers and books. This was from pre-order, so it's one of the very first ones that came out. I'm just going to be looking at the most important lines that I believe myself mean something for Lucy Gray's fate. Because a lot of these lines are building Lucy Gray as a character and the world building and not to as much to do with Lucy Gray's fate itself. So the first stanza. Oft I had heard of Lucy Gray, and when I crossed the wild, I chanced to see at break of day the solitary child. This, I believe, means one of a few things. This could be from Snow's perspective, or it could be from the perspective of District 12. Snow could have been hallucinating seeing Lucy Gray at the end of the movie and at the end of the book that he saw Lucy Gray run off and that's where he shot her as she was running. Or he went back to look for her and she and he he saw he thought he saw Lucy Gray or there were people who he sent to check for say rebels or people trying to escape the boundaries of District 12. He sent peacekeepers out there and the peacekeepers were like, we saw someone but we couldn't get her and he heard rumors that and he thought maybe this could have been Lucy Gray. This also could have been on, in the perspective of, of District 12 saying that they would often see a girl running through the woods in the meadow that they had never seen before that they didn't know because District 12 was very small and most people knew each other especially if you were Lucy Gray and the Covey. The Covey was very well known in the Hob and by District 12 so people would see a young girl walking through and not recognize her or not even a young girl an older woman by that point in for people to be able to forget who she was they would see people in the woods at night because that's when lucy gray would come out of hiding if she were to survive lucy gray not returning to district 12 is backed up by the third stanza you yet may spy the fawn at play the hair upon the green, but the sweet face of Lucy Gray will never be more seen. This is telling us that Lucy Gray disappeared into the wilderness, into the woods, and she became the wilderness in a sense, that she is the hare, she is the fawn at play. Whilst Lucy Gray may not have survived, she is in everything, in all the creatures, in all the nature that is in the meadow of District 12. Knowing this is represented by the meadow, that both Katniss, Lucy Gray, Snow, whatever, all these people, all these characters have gone on. And at the end of uh, Mockingjay, that the meadow is where all these people have been, all these characters have been, is backed up by stanza 13. And then an open field they crossed. The marks were still the same. They tracked them on, nor ever lost, and to the bridge they came. The bridge is what I personally believe to be the the boundary of District 12, but and also something else that I will get into in a minute, but this is essentially telling us this is the meadow. This is that Lucy Gray has become the meadow. She is still there. Her ghost or her person, her soul is still in the meadow, singing to whoever crosses into the field, the open field, as the poem says. As I said for stanza one, I believe this poem can be told from either pers the perspective of Snow or the perspective of the Covey. I wanted to cover, cover Covey. I wanted to cover Snow first and then the Covey because the Covey and their fate, since we don't see the Covey in the original trilogy, I believe that the Covey's fate is also the 
key to finding out what Lucy Gray's fate is. But to build up to that, we need to first look at what Snow's perspective was. It's very important to note that Snow, like Katniss in the original trilogy, is an incredibly biased narrator. What Snow tells us at the end of the story in Songbirds and Snakes about Lucy Gray's fate is likely fabricated for his own narrative. So we need to take it with a grain of salt of what he says and that there's a chance whilst he thinks that he, that she disappeared, she disappeared from the capital's radar at the very least. It doesn't even mean that Snow, that she disappeared from Snow's radar. He might just be telling people that she disappeared because he knows where she is. Once again, Snow's perspective is propaganda like the rest of the capital propaganda going out to the districts. So the snowstorm that occurs in the poem is of course, Snow, literally snow, President Coriolanus Snow. However, an actual storm occurs uh, and we see that in the movie. The stanzas, I believe, are coming from Snow's perspective, but also a little bit of Lucy Gray's perspective herself are seven, eight. I will read out seven and eight first. As carefree as a mountain doe, a fresh new path she broke. Her feet dispersed the powdery snow that rose up just like smoke. The storm came on before its time. She wandered up and down. And many a hill did Lucy climb, but never reached the town. Never reaching the town is what I would assume is not reaching District 13 or not reaching the north of Pan Am, where they were originally headed with snow. They rose up just like smoke could Loki refer to Katniss uh, and her revenge. I'm just going to put that out there, but I'm not going to analyze that line too much. So as Lucy Gray is going towards what would eventually be her fate, Stanza 7 tells us a lot about what was actually going on in Lucy Gray's mind because in the books we only really get Snow's perspective and what he assumes is going on in Lucy Gray's mind. Her carefree nature is very at the forefront of this stanza, which is telling us as the audience that Lucy Gray is completely unaware of what's going on in Snow's mind and that she has unwittingly, unknowingly broken Snow's sanity. Lucy Gray is not aware of this whatsoever. She has full trust in Snow up until this point, up until the point she leaves the cabin and Snow finds the guns. Lucy Gray does not know what's going on. She's carefree. She thinks she's going onto a new life with Snow, with her lover. Lucy Gray has no idea what's going on up, up until this point, And that is what I strongly believe from this stanza. And as we go into stanza eight, the storm came on before its time is telling us that Lucy Gray probably didn't fully trust Snow and that she knew that he was gonna break her trust in some way. We know she probably figured out that he was responsible for Sejanus's death. However, I don't believe that she was planning on doing anything malicious towards Snow. She was just waiting for the trust to be broken. So she went off to do her own thing. She went and fished like she said she was going to, get Katniss, get some food. And stanza eight is also the point in the poem where I started to think that maybe the snow, that this, is, this, this poem is telling us the snow didn't kill her, the storm did. The unexpected nature of this storm is what killed her. From this poem, it is very unlikely that Snow and Lucy Gray were in the same area at the time Snow was shooting into the woods and at Mockingjays and did anything and snakes and she likely lost his mother's scarf as she was going off to find food and I don't believe she began running away until she heard the gunshots. Despite what Snow is trying to tell us in Songbirds and Snakes and trying to lead us to believe he did not kill Lucy Gray. He did not shoot her. He was hallucinating and is unwilling to admit that. The thing that maybe didn't kill Lucy Gray but definitely endangered her was the fact that she was unprepared for being in the woods in general. She didn't have food while she knew how to forage. She like she wasn't at the level that Katniss and her father were. She knew how to fend for herself but without the help of snow she was unprepared for what the wilderness would bring because she didn't have the resources, she had to run quickly, she had to escape quickly, and she didn't have, she left all her resources behind, especially Snow, who would have been an asset to her running away from District 12 because he had that capital spunk. I don't know what other way to describe it, but them as a team would have been better in the way Katniss and Peter were better as a team than just individually except Snow was a psychopath. 
So he couldn't have really helped Lucy Gray. He wasn't really gonna help her with his skills and knowledge. And stanza 15 also represents both Snow and the Cubby. Yet some maintain that to this day, she is a living child, that you may see sweet Lucy Gray upon the lonesome wild. The rumors of Lucy Gray surviving drove Snow mad. And this is where we're going to transition into what happened to the Covey and Lucy Gray. So the Covey, what happened to them? Which parts of this poem do I think reveals what happened to them and what happened to Lucy Gray? Let's first take a look at stanza nine. The wretched parents all that night went shouting far and wide, but there were neither sound nor sight to serve them for a guide. The parents in this poem are actually represented by the Covey in The Hunger Games. From stanza nine to 14, they talk about how the parents, and in this story, we're talking about the Covey, the Covey search and go through a path to search for Lucy Gray. Now I know for a fact that they went looking for Lucy Gray because of this quote. Snow and Lucy Gray are talking about whether or not people will notice that they have left and run away. Lucy Gray, upon ask, being asked by Snow, will the Covey notice that she's gone? Lucy Gray replies with this. I've probably got a few more hours before they start looking. Might be night before they think about the hanging tree and find the wagon. They'll put it together. And of course at night, that's when Lucy Gray is missing and that's when the parents start looking for her. Now at this point, I want to go back to when I mentioned the bridge being the border of, or the boundary of District 12 that Snow would eventually put up. I would like to mention that I also believe the bridge also represents the bridge to Snow's territory. The bridge being the districts and the capital where Snow is essentially the president of and outside the boundaries, people are not allowed to go because it's not his territory. He can't control them outside in the meadow and beyond. As I stated earlier, I sincerely believe that Lucy Gray was nowhere near Snow when he started shooting at her, at her, at, her, at his hallucinations. Lucy Gray did not have the resources to survive as she had to run fast when she heard the bullets from the diff distance, the gunshots from the distance. So I believe when the Covey went looking for her, they did find her. This poem is telling us that Lucy Gray did in fact survive. The storm and her wounds are what she succumbed to eventually. However, the Covey found her and brought her resources, food, and things for just general re for general survival resources. But without a medic, you can't necessarily survive your wounds if she got caught up in the storm and succumbed to those sort of wounds. If Lucy Gray survived, it is very likely Snow eventually found this out through the Covey and following the every single move of the Covey. I have no doubt that he watched every move of the Covey when, especially when he became president, and they knew that he would do this. For both their survival and Lucy Gray's survival, the Covey split up, and that's how they don't exist in the original trilogy, or at least we don't think they exist. That's how Maud Ivory separated from the Covey and became Candace's grandmother, and that's how Tam Amber is widely believed that Tam Amber is the man who sold the goat, uh, Oh my god, what is the name of Prim's goat? Prim's goat. Prim's goat was sold by this man who had a herd of goats and Katniss bought a sickly one from this man. That's widely believed to be Tam Amber. They split up because they were encroaching on Snow's territory, that this bridge was dividing them and Lucy Gray, and that eventually, because they knew that Lucy Gray survived, they had to split up and not bring attention to themselves that and bring Snow's attention to them and Lucy Gray's survival. These footprints disappeared because the Covey covered up their f own footprints. A quote in the Songbirds and Snakes novel that I believe backs up this claim I'm making from the poem is at the in the epilogue. This is from Snow's in a monologue. As to the Covey, a new commander had replaced Hoff, and his first move had been to outlaw shows at the Hob because music caused trouble. So they could no longer make money from the music. They could no longer be a group as the Covey anymore. Circling back to what I mentioned earlier about the Lucy Gray poem widely being believed by Words Wordsworth's Lucy Gray poem, specifically not Suzanne Collins' cleaned up version, widely being believed to be based on a real girl who passed on and Wordsworth allowed her that opportunity to live through the poem. The Covey orally passed down this poem to their future generations, such as Katniss and Prim. In order to have Lucy Gray survive and her legacy to survive despite the snowstorm. This proof of District 12, specifically the Covey, knowing of Lucy Gray's 
survival over snow is shown in the very first novel. In 74 years, we have had exactly two, only one still alive, Hamish Abernathy. And then they don't name the second victor. Whilst there is a list that the man reads out of the two victors, Katniss is also a biased narrator and likely fills it in in her head, or at least I believe that she fills it in in her head that there was a second victor. She was told to always remember the second victor by her grandmother, Maud Ivory. Snow covered up Lucy Gray's disappearance and the covey knew that she was still alive. Lucy Gray by the 74th Hunger Games w had not survived and likely succumbed to her wounds, but she survived Snow and his attempt to literally murder her. No matter what this poem tells us, the Lucy Gray with the ambiguous en ending either way is free. That's the most important thing that we should be taking away from the poem, that she has her freedom away from Snow, away from the confines of District 12. The Covey very likely looked after her and kept her legacy alive throughout the decades all the way up to Katniss where she knows that there is two victors that have won in District 12. So once again, what happened to Lucy Gray? Lucy Gray survived snow. And I've said this so many times already in this video. She survived snow. She did not, however, survive the storm. When the covey went looking for her, she did not have the resources. So they brought her food and she likely hid at night. She likely hid during the day and people likely saw her during the night. And that's when the rumors started stirring that there was this girl that lived in the woods, in the meadows, and people would see her. And these rumors would eventually get back to Snow. Snow, obviously being driven mad by these rumors, he would have sent out peacekeepers to go looking for any possible people who were escaping from the boundary of District 12 and were trying to escape Pan Am. And that's likely when he put up this boundary that District 12 was not allowed to leave from. Hoping that Lucy Gray would not return and these rumors would die out until he heard the hanging tree song from Katniss Everdeen. But I'm going to make an entire video about Katniss's connection to Lucy Gray in next week. It should be next week. Snow eventually found out about Lucy Gray's survival and he either went and killed her, attempted to kill her another time, the covey hit her, or she succumbed to her wounds before Snow could find out that she, ha she was still alive. So by the time Snow got to Lucy Gray, she was already a, a part of the wilderness once more. She was already a ghost in the meadow. But once again, it is an ambiguous ending. It's supposed to be a very ambiguous ending and we're not really supposed to know what happened to Lucy Gray. So it is at least my theory that's what happened to her. Lucy Gray survived and it drove Snow mad and he, that is the reason the cubby broke up. So that is it for today's theory. If you guys enjoyed, please let me know down in the comments what you think happened to Lucy Gray. Do you agree with my analysis of the Lucy Gray poem? I believe very thoroughly that the, this analysis is at least a basis of what happened to Lucy Gray, especially the small little changes that Suzanne Collins made to make it like a world build, like add to her world building in this dystopian future. What do you think of Wordsworth's poem as well? If you look it up online, please let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. I make videos about the Hunger Games, everything to do with films and media, and I also do everything to do with books. I'm annotating books on my channel from now on, as well as analyzing the Hunger Games. Once again, I hope you enjoyed, but I have been CJ. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.